Algebra 1, 10.11b, the Reciprocal Theorem and Proof. The Reciprocal Theorem says for any non-zero rational numbers, a and b, so because they're the denominator, they can't be a zero, can they? So any non-zero rational numbers, a and b, if we have 1 over a times b, it's going to equal 1 over a times 1 over b. And the reciprocal of the product is the product of the reciprocals. It's like saying if we had 1 over 2 times 5, it's going to equal 1 over 2 times 1 over 5. See? This is 1 tenth and that's 1 tenth. To prove this theorem, we'll use the commutative and associative properties to show that a times b multiplied to 1 over a times 1 over b is going to be a 1. So remember, the commutative property says that we can go either direction and get the same answer. So we could do 2 plus 3, and that's going to equal the same thing as 3 plus 2 in the commutative property of addition. And the commutative property of multiplication says that 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. And the associative property says that we can regroup and get the same answer. So in the associative property of addition, it says that 2 plus 3 can be added together and then add 4. And that's going to be the same thing as adding 3 plus 4 and then adding 2. We'll get the same answer. And the associative property of multiplication says the same thing. 2 times 3 it, and get the answer, the product, and multiply it by 4 is going to be the same thing as multiplying 3 times 4 and then multiplying that by 2. Okay? So we're going to use the commutative and associative properties. All right? So here's our statement. And we made a proof table, and we did this in the previous video in a proof table, which we use proof tables next year in geometry to show logical thinking. You have your statements on this side, on the left, and your reasons on this side. And your first statement equals your first reason. See? Number two is next to number two. Number three is next to number three. And it goes all the way down, and we make a statement and this is our proof for the statement, then we make another statement, and that's our reason or proof for the other one. We go all the way down until we prove what we're trying to prove, okay? So the first thing we're going to say is, if you've got a times b, and you're multiplying it by 1 over a times 1 over b, the associative property of multiplication says that we can regroup it when multiplying, so we can actually say that a b times 1 over a, see, we moved the parentheses, we can regroup this so the a, b times 1 over a is in parentheses, and then the 1 over b is outside the parentheses, and they're going to equal each other because the associative property says that we can regroup. This is going to equal the same thing as a times 1 over a times b. So we, we changed the direction and order of what was inside of this parentheses. So now we put the a, 1 over a next to the a and put the b back here, see? And now it's being multiplied by 1 over b. Commutative property of multiplication says that we can do that. We can change direction. So now that we've got the a next to the 1 over a, this is technically a over 1, isn't it? So that's going to make an a over a. And this one, because associative property, we can group this b with this 1 over b like that we end up with a 1, a over a, times 1, b over b. That's a definition of a reciprocal. Two expressions are reciprocals if their product equals 1. 1 times 1 is 1. That's the multiplicative identity property. It says if we multiply anything by 1, it keeps its identity, right? And now we can make the statement that a times b our original 1 times 1 over a times 1 over b is equal to 1 because of the transitive property of equality. That says if we have a, b, and c, and a and b are equal to each other, but b is equal to a third one, c, then the first one, a, is equal to the third one, c. See? If a and b are equal, and b and c are equal, then a and c have to be equal. Okay? So therefore, 1 over a, b... 1 over a times b is equal to 1 over a times 1 over b. It's like saying 1 over 2 times 5 is equal to 1 half times 1 fifth. When we multiply this, we get 1 over 10, and this is 1 over 10. See? 
Okay, our next video is going to be 10.11c, and we're going to do a theorem and proof to multiply two rational expressions. And if you want to go to the links of any of the previous videos, we did a lot of really good word problems. The entire word problem playlist is in there. And we did the factor theorem. We did the division theorem. We did this one with a proof. You can just go in the description of this video and click on the link so it's really easy for you. All right? I hope you're doing okay, and I hope you understood what we did here. And I'll see you the next video. Bye.